Okay, I'm in the uh, cockpit of the Cessna here at, uh, really not sure where I'm, Logan Airport, I guess. But anyway, you can see uh, using one computer to run the uh, visual, and that's networked with the computer that's running another copy of X-Plane on another computer, which is also running Air Manager. I've got Air Manager, and there's the Cessna-oriented, Cessna-style instruments on Air Manager, uh, and the fully functional, all-touch control. And then if we step over here to the uh, side panel, uh, I've got a manifold pressure and uh, gear and flaps also there just to uh, make it compatible with any other airplanes. We've got all the King uh, instruments there, King uh, avionics, including the autopilot, the uh, radios, navcoms, DME, ADF, and the transponder. But here's what we were working on in the other video, and I've made some improvements on it. I don't know if you can notice them. But the uh, bezels there are locked. I'm gonna gonna unlock that bezel just to show you what what's going on here. I'll do the top one. And this is mostly for those who weren't here at my previous. But I can take my finger and move that, and you can see that this is the actual GPS down there. And you notice all the buttons work fine. They don't give you any feedback, but they work fine. The problem comes with this this to trying to change frequencies. You have to tap it. And you got to tap it in the right spot. It's easy to, to, to get screwed up. So by creating this mask, it fits right over there perfectly. Okay. And then I'm going to lock that so it won't slide with my finger. Uh, we have touch control for those. So if I touch the outer one or the inner one there, you can see I can change that frequency. Touch the outer one. And I made that much bigger than it was before. So it's much easier to find the sweet spot there. And the inner one, and I also made the dot, the CV, the, the uh, com VOR switch, the button smaller. It's very small in the middle, but it's easy to hit. And that way you don't accidentally highlight, hit that button when you're trying to get the uh, frequency. I changed it to, to 30 degrees instead of 45 degrees per uh, unit. Now that's selectable, but now every 30 degrees I get a click and a change. Uh, you can make that as fine as you want, but I found if you make it too fine, it's hard to be accurate. Okay, so what I've added now is I've added the 430 also. And as you can see, right up here it says GPS 1, and down here it says GPS 2. What, what I've done is uh, coded it so that it had, can communicate with the one unit or the two unit. And what it's doing is uh, basically there's a constant in each of those instruments. So you can set one to... Uh, if you set a, a variable called uh, uh, G underscore unit equal to one, then it, the unit will com communicate with the GPS one. And if you use underscore two, so unit underscore two equal to our unit underscore G underscore unit set to two, that's easy for me to say, then the unit will communicate with the number two. Anyway, uh, looks like it's gonna work great. It gives me uh, uh, really a lot of flexibility. I'm going to post these uh, into the store. I'll send them to Sim Innovations. They'll be posted in the store. You'll be able to uh, download those free and use them. Uh, I did talk to Glamina Research, and uh, uh, the uh, creator of the uh, GPS said uh, no problem using the graphics. Uh, they're just copies of their graphics. I was going to redo those uh, to make them uh, my own, but uh, they said I could use their graphics. So. Uh, since it's for a community use and not for profit, uh, feel free. Uh, we'll have this uploaded and you can download it and use it in your Air Manager uh, cockpit and have uh, some really quality navigation available.